Can you hear me? OK, cool. So before I get started, uh, I would like to talk about that joke. So like, basically, I would like to invite my parents, actually. I will invite those who have nurtured me, who have educated me, and who have beaten me up. And also, I would like to like, introduce like, my friends and my teachers, because that's really important. And I want my friends to see like, how I do it like, in a talent show, if I could get into a talent show. OK, I will do some like, self-introduction before I get started. So I'm, I'm, I'm Simon Lee. Yeah, I, I know I'm not uh, famous, but uh, I know I'm not famous, I, but I would still do a self-intro. So I'm, I go to Princeton High School. I'm a current sophomore. Um, what I have been researching is about uh, uh, anthro-robotics, which is basically about like, uh, humanoid uh, robotics. So. Um, so what I would like to talk about is that I want to like say that before I get started, I would like to say that my English is not good. All right. So if you can't understand, just uh, just like take out your cell phone and like look it up. And and please, please, I have no I have no English. If you can understand me, just like just laugh. All right. <laughs> just laugh. And uh, like for, uh, if you laugh, I know that like you can actually understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's get started with a story, with my personal story. Though it's not a successful story, but I would like to get started with that. So it was a chilly night in 2012. I, I was walking around a bookstore, thinking about whether I would spend my budget on the novel our teacher signed, or on a couple of comics. Uh, after serious consideration, I ended up being a stereotypically good boy and picking up the novel. On my way back home, I was wondering if there could have been another option. Like, for example, I could get comics. Like, when I got back to home, there would be a genius robot who could tell me about the novel. This genius would know more than all human beings after accumulating a story information from everywhere in the world. So he would know all I need to learn. Therefore, I, know I would no longer need to care about my grades, right? Uh, that was just an imaginary world that popped up in a 10-year-old boy's mind. But have you ever thought about the fact that we are making our lives easier and easier? From storing books in libraries to storing information on the internet. From riding horses on land to traveling by air in the sky. From rowing boats to powering submarines in the deep water. Human beings are technologically evolving the world. As we can see, we are creating modern technology. And what modern technology is doing is something that's hardly reachable by human beings. For instance, the AlphaGo challenge and beat the World Go champion in 2017, which is really amazing, right? And the two networks in the AlphaGo made it able to recognize and analyze the whole plane and the format of Go. And here the question arises. Will someday, in the future, our technology is vanishing itself? It will pull us back to safety when we are on the horn of a dilemma. Imagine someday, like in 2030s, you become an astronaut, taking a space wandering task that no one has ever tried before. Your mission is to find new organisms and new life forms. You are ecstatic as your spaceship goes deeper and deeper to find another continent in the universe. However, no spaceships have ever been to this unknown world. Because of its lack of experience, the aeronautics department underestimated the time needed for this space travel. The gauge that shows the remaining energy is gradually approaching zero, while your destination is far away. The situation is becoming daunting and intimidating, rather than exciting. At this particular moment of crisis, the anthro-robotics installed on your spaceship get triggered. He's Tony, created with humanoid brain and body, which will make him understand Rationality and emotionality. 
and it will also make him understand the physical world and our reality. So basically, what his brain does in his left brain, like his left brain tells me how to quickly process all kinds of algorithms. And in his emotional brain, which is his right brain, tells me how to understand your emotion and how and understand why you are fearful. So he decides that um, after uh, considering a little bit, he decides he wants to land on a planet first because there's no energy sources nearby. So after he lands on a planet, with the conditions he's never experienced before. Tony starts looking for an energy source. Like, why are you are crying inside of the spaceship due to the fear of being captured by aliens? And his job is to look over like, the whole planet and see if there's any available sources. Like, within just a couple of seconds, like, this genius robot found that this planet has heat, which can be used as an energy source. And this could save your life and your spaceship. So he takes out the emergency tube and starts collecting energy. After 10 minutes, your spaceship is full of energy again. And you guys are so good to go. Uh, you guys become the first space problem solvers in the mankind of history. So the story of fixing damaged spaceships for human beings will come true. And you will actually see it. This is artificial intelligence, data structure, machine learning, and software robotics coming together. Machines are beginning to learn on their own, discovering new knowledge independently, and acting autonomously. Machine learning will be broadly used in smart cities, where all of us will live in. And basically, what I want to do is that I want to create an actual brain, not a human brain, but an artificial one. It would be able to know what the fourth wave is. So the fourth wave is basically about perceiving, reasoning, learning, and communicating. So these four concepts help the rest of robotics get involved in our human community and interact with our human beings. So this is so crucial and important because human beings need more support in our future while when our population is continuously growing. And ethical robotics will get involved of the, into our community, which is, which is fabulous and amazing. But besides that, we need to think about like, some debatable issues, like will they have basic human rights? Because human rights are for human beings. And we can't like, say like, robotics have human rights because they are robotics who, only, who are only responsible for doing repetitive tasks. And, but in our future, the ethical robotics will combine biomimicry with cellular materials, which means they will behave like human beings. So this is a this is still a debatable issue. And once they know what human rights are, they would fight for them. So when they know, they, when they have basic desire and when they want to dominate the world, they will sw swipe us to like Mars, to Moon, to Venus. And we, we have to build our, another community, which we don't really want. And we need to know how to catch this wave because we want to dominate the future. We want to dominate our anthro robotics. We want to dominate our technology instead of letting them dominate us. Hope my talk was helpful, and thank you guys so much.